Fallout 3 has quite a few locations to discover and explore, but most of them are neck deep in the ruins of Washington DC, so you don't get a good taste of nature. Luckily, there's a place that was never touched by nuclear Armageddon. Can you beat Fallout 3's Point Lookout DLC without taking any damage? The setup for these Fallout 3 DLC videos are all the same. Be born, pick skills, escape the vault, blah 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 who cares. Rather than going through all that, I loaded a save from early on in my The Pit No Damage Run playthrough. I'd be doing all the same stuff anyway. I've already proven that I can make it to Megaton and just about any location on the map with limited supplies without taking any damage. Then I returned to Megaton and got mauled to death by a filthy mongrel because I'd set my max health to 1 so that any damage of any kind kills me. From there, I began heading deep into the depths of the southern region of the Capital Wasteland. My destination is the Riverboat Landing to take me away to the land of magic and incest. On my journey there, I stopped by some Talon Company building and died. With one down, I took his weapons, snagged a stealth boy, killed his brother, found even more trash in a bedbox, and went about my business of being lit on fire and watching a group of ghouls harass the reason for that drive slow sign at the end of the block. Some fool with a missile launcher used the power of damage to damage me. I broke both his hands with a bullet as recompense for his sins. Took his stuff for myself, Brian Wilkes found himself a new friend that's actually alive. I spontaneously combusted and was told by Big Head about a special soda. He had a dog meet with him, so I killed them both, robbed his corpse, got into a scuffle with some nearby Neanderthals, and my past came back to haunt me. The missile launching ghosts of past massacres are on the scene and are not happy that I exist. I tried quite a few times to kill them. The riverboat was just down the road and I already had plenty of supplies, so I ignored them, met Catherine, discovered the ferryman, bought a ticket to ride, sold my garbage, and took my place on the high seas. At long last, we made it to the mesmerizing shores of Point Lookout, where the grass is green and the air is even greener. Toby welcomed me to the island and told me about the spooky mansion. You can tell this is a good DLC because there's a ferris wheel in it. But like other DLCs, Point Lookout has its fair share of new creatures in the form of backwoods knuckleheads who love their father like a brother loves their mother's sister. After my first encounter with the West Virginian common folk, I found the mansion and entered it in search of something to do. Inside, I was given the order by Desmond to help him defend his mansion, and was also given free reign to take any supplies I wanted. This beautiful mustachioed corpse effectively had an armory where his kitchen should be, and I took advantage of that in more ways than you can imagine. Let's just say that his toaster should be getting a visit from the coat hanger fairy in a few months, if you know what I mean. The next period of time consisted of the great process of engaging in combat for a period of time. Usually, you'd want to avoid multiple close quarters encounters with loud foes and firearms all over the place. All the instances of non-stealthy fighting present numerous opportunities for your fragile frame to be slammed to death by a tribal that doesn't understand how they just forfeited their life with that little mistake. Other tribals prefer the art of ranged combat through the use of firearms. Most, however, are of the semi-automatic variety. Several dead bodies later, I discovered the raw majesty of wooden boards that hover in the air like they're in Pixar Presents World War II villain zombies and the joy that comes from blowing the head off a tribal who just busted a hole in the wall with their body. I accidentally teabagged a child's learning cube before getting into a lengthy confrontation with even more tribals. The annoying part was that I could see them on my compass but I couldn't reach them with a grenade ricocheted off the wall. I eventually resorted to using mines to destroy their lives with the element of surprise. For a while, this presented the classic Call of Duty gameplay we've all come to know and love with 1v1 gameplay encounters one with nothing but your reflexes and your connection to the server. Before long, I learned that it was Karen Dog's birthday, and even worse, the tribals are breaking their way into the main room of the mansion. They were destroyed both physically and emotionally, the mental toll of what I'd just done turned my legs to noodles, causing the floor to buckle underneath my slimy legs, allowing my entire body to plummet several stories down into the basement with the mannequins and no way out. 
The tribals, who'd heard my manly screams as I plummeted towards my demise, came to check on me and finish the job. Gravity couldn't. Fresh out of the basement, I found myself in an even more disheveled portion of the mansion, filled with boarded up windows and holes in the floor that more than once saw witness to my failed attempt to kill myself with a grenade. I used a door to brute force the tribals into activating my trap card so I could kill them while they were busy fumbling around with a worthless animation. Back upstairs, I started to think that this was all there was to this DLC. Maybe the rest of the island was a mirage, and all that come to the island find themselves in the mansion sooner or later. The only time I saw anyone breaking into a room was when they were already in the mansion. Nobody came in from the outside. Some time ago, I blew up something in a room that was capable of exploding, then did something similar to another thing on the east side of the building. This blocked off the flanking positions of the tribals, ensuring that their only route to Desmond and I was head-on. Now you'd think that with a missile launcher, all you'd have to do was sit in a corner and shoot missiles at any door that opens, instantly killing all those who thought that door was opening to the rest of their lives. One was even frozen in fear at the prospect of walking through the door to her death, so I brought the death to her. More floating boards appeared several minutes into the tribal onslaught. They block your path, can stop bullets, and annoy me with their existence. Almost as much as Desmond was annoyed at my existence. He's not a nice man. He's actually kind of a cunt. He wanted me to get my hands dirty, and he didn't seem interested in my idea of dirtying my hands with whatever blood was left in his head. Instead, he sent me off to become my tribal. At this point, I was getting deja vu from another Fallout DLC. Far Harbor, fend off an attack, talk to a guy, go find a tribal cult and join their ranks, and a swampy mountainous area, real peculiar. As I explored Point Lookout a bit more, the plants I stuffed into my pockets knocked my BMI back up into the obese category for the first time in years. I found, observed, and murdered a couple vicious dogs. Once their lives ended, I arrived at the church, borrowed some railroad spikes, stood at the threshold of transcendence, and was sent to complete the ritual of the mother seed. It's like a giant cactus covered in glitter or something. All I knew about, and my only care in the world, was getting one of those special seeds and being exploded next to a car. The seed was on the other side of the area, through the river and into the woods past the house of Scrapper Festus and Mr. Underbite. The Scrappers aren't too noteworthy. If we're being honest with ourselves, they're basically just tougher raiders with a different coat of paint. The swamp itself was fairly spooky, made more spooky by the overall wearing hunchbacks with a propensity for physical violence. The game conveniently crashed right when I was about to fucking destroy them both. Back in the game, I continued to wander through the darkness in search of seeds, said the appropriate phrase upon seeing a creeper, battled a radioactive fly who'd mastered the art of moving side to side, found some blood, and entered the hidden bug cavern. It was exceptionally dark, but braving the frightening cave was worth it, as the sacred bog was just beyond the light at the end of the tunnel. The bog was as sacred as it was wet. All the irradiated water filled my mind with worry and my boots with liquid. Mire lurks and swamp lurks littered the area. The swampy queen proved a formidable foe when she laughed off my double barrel shot to the face, prompting me to flee for my life and avoid most creatures living deeper in the bog. It didn't take long for me to find the fungus king, inhale a swarm of its spores, collapse on the ground, and get beaten to death by a fish. The unconsciousness lasted about 10 seconds, I think. Because of how difficult it is to keep track of time when you're not awake, I cannot confirm that it was only 10 seconds. Upon waking up, both my eyes had been coated in melted blue plastic, similar to what occurred in the Far Harbor DLC. I didn't backtrack through the bog. Seemed like it would have taken some effort. I was told by the game to return to the church. Obviously, I didn't do that. I quick save quick loaded myself through the Earth's crust and took a leisurely stroll into the infinite remainder of the world. Part of me was expecting, hoping even, that I would run many miles and turn around and be like one social distance away from the sacred bog. That didn't happen. After I mutilated a couple bugs, I fast traveled back to the Ark and Dove Cathedral to take the next step towards sneaking my way into heaven. Jimson talked of the ritual like it was some out-of-body experience. None of that mattered because the tribal let me into the church. I introduced myself to Woodrose, then Nadine, who was the bitch I came here to find. She explained that some tree man cut my skull open in the 10 seconds I was unconscious in the woods. Then she said that she joined the cult to make the big bucks, 
and that the assault on the mansion was Jackson's idea. I had no idea who that was, or if they liked jazz. From there, I returned to Desmond in the mansion, to bask in the warmth of his eternal disappointment in me for doing just as he asked. I tried to blow off one of his legs and kill his pets, but all three are essential and can't die because Bethesda hates fun. Desi sent me to the northeast part of Point Lookout to get more information from the tribal leader. The cemetery I almost entered predictably had an assortment of undead friends in it. The cliff I totally didn't accidentally survive falling down led me to the sea cave, home of the sea man himself. Because the plot had to be advanced, Jackson spoke of killing Desmond right when I was within earshot. Jackson felt up a great potential deep inside me and granted me permission to speak to the great transparent one, known to all except himself as the master. He's a holographic projection of a brain that is just as nice to me as Desmond. The brain wanted me to kill Desmond, who appears to be the reason why the brain is a brain and not a person. My master called on me to return to the Calvay mansion once more to carry out his vision. After a single warning shot, I engaged in idle conversation with the bone sack. Turns out the blue guy on the table in the cave was at one point in time Professor Calvert, a member of the Calvert family from whom the mansion gets its name. Desmond got a bit snooty. I gave him an empty threat, since I still couldn't kill him, and he sent me to stuff a box in a worm's hole. I put the square thing on the big spinning thing and we all live happily ever after. Except for the part where an army of inbred tribals are sent to make me suffer. Attempting to flee from the ferris wheel while the tribals were in the area always ended with my death. I picked off a few with a missile launcher I'd retrieved from my special pocket, died, bobbed and weaved in the carnival, died a couple more times and decided to handle this the correct way. Cosplay as the very thing I'm trying to kill by becoming translucent, then running away. Yeah, the brain was not thrilled with my actions. I figured that out when he blew up the mansion. Somehow the blast was powerful enough to fling my body backwards, yet didn't damage me in any way. I'd forgotten there were dogs in the house. Their deaths were the one good thing to come out of this so far. The puppies exploding was what pushed Desmond over the edge and with the stench of vengeance in the air, I followed my undead buddy to the lighthouse where the brain was broadcasting from. After making it to the lighthouse, Desmond and I entered the underground lab to end it all together, hand in hand. Turrets hiding in the dark corners of the room woke up and killed me more than once. Desmond did a lot of the shooting while I perused the dormitories for trash. Most of what the brain sent our way were robots with the occasional turret mounted on the ceiling. And at long last, we found the brain. I expected that the Protectrons would wake up after discussions of peace between Desmond and the other guy went sideways, which was why I killed them all while they slept like a good legal guardian. Then came the final decision, one last chance to pick my side. Do I kill Desmond or kill the brain? First I sided with the floaty guy and killed Desmond. The brain rewarded me with death, but because I prematurely killed the robots, nothing happened. I blasted apart the brain's chamber took a quick look through my goodie bag, and was a little let down that that was it. So I went back and sided with Desmond instead to see what the other ending was. Apparently he's such a failure of a person that he'd been battling the professor for over 200 years. I accepted my reward. Desmond explained that the entire thing was a game. He was moving on to destroy his next rival. To prevent that, I used the microwave emitter I'd gotten as a thank you to turn him into a puddle of dead body on the ground and I beat Fallout 3's Point Lookout DLC without taking any damage. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters as well as other channel members for helping make videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server through a link in the video description. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad or don't. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.